Hello Virgo, welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Virgo is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It is totally free, it does not cost you anything. All right. If there's anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I'm merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Virgo, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And this is the Queen of Swords. This is a higher perspective. This is now you kind of rising above some situation to see what's really going on. I kind of get this feeling like, is this, is this really happening? You know, we're trying to take a step back from something and look at it and be like, is this real? You know, let's put this into some context, okay? That's very good. That is us trying to get a bird's eye view of what we're feeling in our hearts. See, this is the queen of swords. It's water and air. We're trying to get that higher perspective on, on what we're feeling and trying to say, okay, I feel a certain way about this, but what does is, what is my objectivity tell me? Well, let's see. Hmm. I've got a high priestess now. Interesting. Three of wands. Empress. Two of cups. Three of cups. Yeah. Mm, I'd say this is probably really happening, Virgo. This is so, this is nice. This is nice. Um, and I, I kind of feel like the high priest is saying, yes, you, you open your, your arms to this, embrace this, accept this, right? This is really happening and you kind of deserve to take it in. Yeah. Um, at the same time, three of wands underneath, you want to protect yourself. You know, you've got this almost a suspicious eye, you know, cautious, you know yourself. And um, I think you know the level of commitment that you can give something. So you better make sure it's real before you give it everything you've got. Right? Smart. You're smart. Let's finish up. We've got a few more cars. We've got a Hierophant here. We've got the Art or Temperance card. We've got the Eon card, or the it's a trial by fire. It's kind of a um, big decision. And I think it, it matches up with this fire energy of the Three of Wands. You know that if this is real, and you decide to do it, that you're going to give it everything you've got, because that's the type of person you are. So, temperance. We're trying to say, okay, I feel all of this overwhelming love energy. I'm so excited about this thing. Let me just double check everything, right? Let me make sure that it is what I think it is and make sure that I'm not being led away by my feelings before I give it everything I've got and I go through this fiery doorway. Two, what is this going to be? Ah, nine of cups, yeah. My goodness, um, this is really happening and you're gonna love it, right? That's what, that's what this is telling me. This is really a stunning, a stunning group of cards. And we've been having a lot of stunning readings for you, Virgo. Things seem to be getting better and better and better. Um, I do think there's going to be some unexpected contact with someone. Someone out of the blue is going to call you up or, or show up or text you or something like this. I think it's somebody you want to see. Yeah. Um, I almost feel like it's somebody from your past that you're going to be like, wow, I haven't seen you in a long time. How are you doing? You know, I don't know if it's related to um, to what this water energy is. I don't want to say that there's romance involved, but there could be. We've got a two of cups after all. Okay, but it does not have to be that. All right, and that's what we. That's something I like to make absolutely clear. Um, this is whatever whatever it is for you. It's going to be very unique to your situation. All right. The empress that we have in the background is, I think. This is what we want it to be, right? This is what we kind of feel, and it's almost the Empress. It's, it's a wonderful card. Every card, you remember, has light and shadow. 
The shadow of this card is that we might be so lured, so seduced by something that our rational mind goes out the window and we just love this so much I can't wait and I'm going after it with everything I have. It feels that good, right? But you're being, you're stopping that with this queen of swords that says, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Hold your horses here, Empress. You need to double check, confirm, validate, authenticate. Authenticate. We're using the mind now to get a, we're stepping back from the situation. Maybe taking a day or two, maybe just, you know, looking at it a little bit more clearly. Um, aside from all of these overwhelming feelings of joy and love and bliss and and you know passion and creativity and all of these really good feelings we're going to look at things with somewhat of a, of an objective eye right as much as we can and we're going to see what this is all about we're going to confirm that this is what i feel it to be what i really want it to be and if it is if everything checks out full speed ahead right this is something that has the potential to change your your life uh, and create such an overwhelming abundance of love and happiness and bliss and pleasure physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, creatively. This could be the union, the match made in heaven, the, the soulmate situation. It really could be that kind of deep, intimate connection for you. It depends on what you're looking for, right? I, I'm not going to say that's it for everybody. Um, The High Priestess, though, is a card that's kind of coming in and saying, yeah, you can trust what you're feeling. You're, think, you're, you're saying, thank you. I appreciate that. I also want to look for myself, right? Make sure that I'm not being blinded by my emotions. Sometimes the moon card here, this is the full moon. And sometimes we can mistake the full moon light for sunlight, for daylight, for actual perception. Things look different in the daylight than they do at night, they, when they do um, in the moonlight, right? So there's such thing as being moonstruck. Um, and I feel like you want to make sure, you want to make sure that you're seeing things accurately. The Empress and the Moon together, very convincing, right? And I'm not trying to convince you one way or the other, because I think you've got all the energy that you need. You, you have this overwhelming feeling. And really, if we look at it, look at these. I mean, Empress, High Priestess, a two and three of cups. The nine of cups, the end. We see the future. We think this could be really the future of my dreams. Look at all this. That is just wonderfully amazing. Cover all that stuff up. That's what we have. Yeah. Like, it's hard to see anything else, right? We could get so carried away by this. But no, you're saying, okay, I'm going to step back. I'm going to be objective. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to ask around. I'm going to double check. I'm going to do my research, do your due diligence. You know yourself. You know what you are capable of. You know that if you allow yourself to be swept away by this, that you're going all in. Okay, so you're trying to be wise, you're trying to be uh, prudent, and um, you're trying to make the right decision because you really want this happiness. You want an authentic happiness, a sincere future that is nine of cups, right? Blissful, pursuing your happiness, following your bliss. You want that life, okay? The three of wands is knowing yourself, you know? You know your, your will. You know your intention. You have this certain fiery energy about you that can stand up for yourself, that can say no, that can say yes, right? And uh, you know what your mind and your heart are capable of. You know that your heart has the capacity to love infinitely. And you know that your mind has the power to um, facilitate that infinite love, okay? So you know yourself. You have character. You have a you have a real sense of self, but a centeredness. You know, there's a real kind of a, almost like a sober practicality with you, right? 
Um, Spirit's telling me that you have a lot of things in storage still. I don't know what that's about. Maybe this is not romantic after all. Maybe this is something kind of career related. It could be. This could be something about uh, travel uh, because of the, uh, well, because of the Hierophant for one thing. But because I'm, I'm getting that feeling that you have a lot of things in storage, like, like things are, things are still in flux with you. Things have not settled. You don't have roots deeply in the ground yet where you are, right? So this could be a transitional phase, but maybe you'll stay here. Maybe you're going to go through this fiery doorway, which is kind of like, that's why things are in storage because they haven't been brought into the house yet and put away and just kind of settled. So it's like, I still got stuff in storage just in case I've got to, I've got to make a move. Yeah. So I feel like you are looking for something and I think you're looking for that nine of cups. What is the, what is the vessel for that nine of cups? How are we manifesting that? So we need some earth energy. First, let's do the mystery card. Maybe this will be some earth energy. We're not going to know until the end because this is a random card from the Smith Weight Tarot. Do one more little shuffle. We're going to set it down over here. We're going to put Kevin, a.k.a. Mr. Bates, right there on top. If you know who Kevin is and you know who Mr. Bates is, you get a cookie. All right. One of these days we'll make dove and serpent cookies, right? And then we'll all just... We'll start mailing cookies out to everybody. Um, if at any point during the reading you feel like you know what that card is, I want you to put your prediction down below in the comments. Um, let's do it together. We can make it a group exercise. All right. I think it's always a good idea to practice our intuition. Yeah. Let's take a look around the room. A lot of major arcana. One, two, three, four, five. All major arcana here. Right? And then we got a little fire. We got a little water. We've got a little air. We don't have any really solid earth. So I think that there is no decision yet. You have not made any moves yet. You have not committed to anything. You've not, um, you know, you've not like sold your house yet. You've not yet like put in your notice at work that you're going to be leaving. Right? You haven't done anything yet. Okay. I think we're still in this phase of, of almost like, Ah, we're like in disbelief, like, is this real? Maybe this is the opportunity for you to go live in that country that you always wanted to live in and do the work you always wanted to do with the people you always wanted to do it with. And you're just like, is this, could this, could this be happening? Is this real? You know, it feels too good to be true, kind of, right? And that's your very important Virgo mind saying, wait a minute, let me take a look at everything. You're going to read through the contract first before you sign it, right? You're that kind of person. Spirit's telling me that you have a very special water bottle that you use. Um, I feel like it's got a lot of, I don't know if it's one of those ones that you can draw on, but it seems very creative, uh, very uniquely yours, you know? Um, and so that to me feels right because it's, it's something good. It's the water energy. It's something good for you. It's, it's very practical, right? You, you carry water with you. I mean, that's smart. Um, but yet it's very creative. It's very, um, it's very, I don't know if silly is not the right word, but it's just very whimsical, very playful, right? And I think you have these two sides to you. Very practical, very, very smart, very objective, very analytical, very thoughtful, but then also very inspired, very loving, very passionate, very creative. Heart and mind in this one. Remember, it's, it's water and air. So what you're trying to do here in this situation, essentially, is you're taking what you want to do, this, this impulse that you feel. This feels like, yes, I want to do it. Let's analyze it. Let's split it up. Let's see what my heart is feeling. Well, we know what the heart's feeling. The heart wants it. What is the mind doing? Is the mind on board? But then we got to say, what is the body feeling? We don't, we don't got a lot of body here, right? The, the earth energy is, is kind of missing. But there is earth energy here in the Hierophant, and we, we'll get to that. 
Uh, the two of cups at the top, I feel like this is you really knowing what you want. And that's why this is a little bit, I almost want to, I almost feel like there's some sort of suspicion here. Because it's just like, you know exactly what you want. And for some reason, this feels like it's exactly what you want. Now, how could that be? Right? How does spirit know exactly what you want in, I think, all aspects of your life? Not just career, not just creativity, not just interpersonal relationships, love relationships, friendships, spiritual life, you know? All of it. How does it know, you know? How does it know you so well? Well, I think there's been a lot of spiritual work going on with you. A lot of, a lot of energy has been working itself out beneath the surface in you lately. Right, go back and look at the last few readings that we did for you, Virgo. A lot of stuff has been going on. And I think that this is really, um, it's a way really that your, your spirit, your soul, or the spiritual light, the divine energy working through you is taking your essence and reflecting it out into the world in such a pure way that it seems like that's exactly what I wanted. How did, how did the universe know, you know? And I think because it is a reflection of you. So it's going to be mirrored in, in your world. And that's the Two of Cups. It's a mirror image, right? Finding exactly what we want. And even to the point where we got to do a double take and we have to look at it again and say, okay, is this real? You know, something too good to be true. Let's, let's double check it, right? It's not going to hurt anything. Um, the Three of Cups in the future, I feel like this is a really positive sign because this is abundance. This is celebration. This is kind of saying that, the, um, that you and exactly what you want that's reflected into the, you know, into the external world, that combination, you and this other thing, this life, this opportunity, this situation that's too good to be true, those two things together are creating magic are creating abundance, that there is, it's a, it's a transcendent kind of thing. It's like one plus one does not equal two, right? At 11, right? Shout out to Tool and to Danny Carey, my favorite drummer. Um, I did hear that he watches the channel, that he's a fan of the, uh, the work that we do and the Thoth Tarot especially. So shout out to Danny Carey. That's my, that's my boy. Um, it's a transcendent experience. The two things together are greater than the sum of the parts, you know? Um, so there is, this, there is this abundance that is created, you know? It's not just one plus one equals two. Um, and, and I feel like this is a really good sign. This is in the future position here. And it's kind of like the promise of the Empress. The Empress is back here saying, hey, this is your utopia. Well, we all know about utopias, right? And it's, kind of just, it's an ideal that is not, not realistically attainable. And that's why we're, we're a little bit cautious here. That's why we're trying to be objective and, and look at things and analyze things. But then we've got that Three of Cups that says, well, hey, maybe, maybe the spirit, maybe what your Maybe what the universe is offering you or what your soul is, is offering you is real. It's almost like, it's almost like somebody is promising you um, paradise, right? The land of milk and honey, all of this, this euphoria, this bliss, promising you the world and delivering. Delivering. Let's go over to the path of the serpent. Let's talk about these major arcana energies. And also, if you haven't subscribed, please do. It's totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, and it helps out the channel, and then you can get notified when another reading comes out. So it's a win-win thing. All right. I appreciate you. We start with the Hierophant. The Hierophant is some earth energy. Okay. It is kind of... Um, this is us tr trusting in our, our higher authority. I feel like there is a lot of spiritual energy around you. I feel like you're connected with your spirit guides, um, guardian angels, ancestors, in a way that's very, very practical. Yeah. So I feel like there's kind of like, um, there's confirmation that you're, that you're waiting for. 
It's like you've put a call out to your guides and you're just waiting for their okay. You're waiting for that sanction. You're waiting for that blessing, right? And so we, we analyze things for ourselves and it's like, okay, it checks out for me. I just got to authenticate it with my guides, with my guardian angel, with my soul, with my true self, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then we can go ahead with it, you know? So it's kind of like your, your analytical nature is the kind of the first step. And then we just, then we kind of send it up for confirmation and then we're, then, then we're okay to go forward. Yeah. Um, I do, I am still getting that feeling that you're going to be, you're meeting somebody that you haven't seen in a long time, like a long lost friend or a long lost love or somebody coming back into your life that, um, I don't know, I, I almost feel like you knew them from school and you lost touch with them, but then they're kind of coming back. It's the person that played the piano very well. They were very good at piano, right? I don't know if it was a piano teacher, if this was a, a teacher or a fellow student, um, but it's somebody that you really admired and somebody that you're going to be very pleased to be in touch with again. Yeah. And that might be part of the confirmation. That might be some synchronicity that's telling you, okay, that's the green light that I needed. You know, um, it's uh, kind of like you have this opportunity to travel to another country and then come to find out your best friend from high school also lives in that neighborhood. Well, that's the synchronicity that I was that I needed. That's the green light from spirit that's saying, OK, yeah, that's just that's kind of the that's the final um, the final authentication, the final checkpoint. You know, after you've done your due diligence, then we get that kind of confirmation, that kind of synchronicity and you know, and we're ready. Um, the temperance card, of course, in the environment, very important because we get carried away with all of this energy. We've got to, we've got to have that, the checks and balances. Okay. Um, so it's always important, I think, especially when we're making a decision that I think is going to affect the rest of your life, that we put the brakes on it, that we don't just go with that feeling and get completely, again, completely seduced, completely carried away by that energy. We've got to temper ourselves. We've got to calm down. We've got to look at it objectively. We've got to balance our emotions out. Let's get out of our feelings a little bit and look at it. Okay. And I think that this car too, because it's in the position of the environment, is that you're starting to look at it kind of from a strategic point of, point of view, trying to figure out if it makes sense right before we really get that earth energy here. And I, I'm wondering if the mystery card is going to be some earth energy before we initiate the plan. We have to kind of, we have to think the plan through and see how it would end up, you know, so we're running through scenarios. We're kind of doing these training exercises in our minds, these visualizations and saying, okay, if I did this, how's it really gonna, how do I see this playing out? Yeah. And it's one of these exercises, I think, that we do. Um, do you make uh, dream catchers? I feel like you either you have one above your bed or you need to have one above your bed. Okay. We're tr or not even a dream catcher, more like a dream filter. Right? Because I think we're really trying to cut the noise out and just get to that kind of clear, objective, higher perspective, which is what we need here. All right, that's what it's all about here. And maybe some of this high priestess energy is a little bit of that dreaminess, that moon, that lunar light, right? The moonlight, um, a little bit of that moonstruck energy. Maybe, maybe there is a bit of a dream filter needed so we can just kind of think and feel clearly about what we're going to do, right? Um, not being too swayed by all of this intense love, water, feeling energy, you know, the Empress, the two, three of cups, all that stuff, or even the prospect of the nine of cups in the future, just beyond this doorway, because this is a decision that is going to affect the rest of your life. It's almost like we are proceeding to a new land, a new era, a new destination, a new dimension, almost a new timeline here, big shift, big shift. Okay has the potential. What we see on the other side is this absolute excitement and fulfillment, this wonderful nine of cups, 
this is the fulfillment of what we want. You know, if we think that, okay, how does the universe know exactly what I want? And now here's an opportunity to get exactly what I want. That seems pretty impossible. Well, the nine of cups also has a secret to reassure us because it's a nine of cups. It's not a 10 of cups. It isn't exactly what you want down to the color of the wallpaper and the names of everybody's like pets or something, but it's pretty close, right? It's pretty close where it's just like, what are the odds that this is going to be so perfect? The nine of cups leaves us a little bit of room to strive a little bit of room. Maybe you don't want something that's just already perfect. Maybe you don't want the car or the house or the life that is just kind of ready-made. Here you go. Perfect. It's all yours. Maybe you want to do a little bit of work yourself, right? And Virgo, I think you do. I think you kind of, you like taking something that is a little bit less than perfect and then adding your flavor to it, like your water bottle, you know, pretty, pretty perfect on its own, but you want to be you want to participate in that. You want to have your input. You don't want something to be already finished. You want to put those little flourishes on there. You want to put the finishing touches. So we have a nine of cups. It's just about perfect. Anybody else would probably think that's perfect. But you see it as an opportunity to do a little bit of creative work yourself and, and build something up now where it is it is an ongoing expression of what you want because it's not like we have this static picture of what we desire and then boom, it manifests in that static way. It's a process, you know, every day, every moment, every second, we're a little bit different. Every second, your heart changes just a little bit, right? Our blood is constantly pumping through our bodies, you know, doing whatever it does. So we're never exactly the same. So to think of something as being a, an, a perfect picture of what I want, yeah, it might seem that way now, but everything is going to be in flux. Everything is, is always changing just a little bit, sometimes more, sometimes less. But that gives us the opportunity to always be creating, always be doing, always be feeling more and more. Our desires change just a little bit. That gives us something else to go after something else to work toward, to strive toward, to create, right? If you're a creator, if you're an artist of life generally, then that's what you do. You don't want to stop doing what you do. Then you would stop being, right? So, you know, we want to continue the process, I think is what, is what I'm saying here. If you're a creator, then that's what you do. That's what your best life is. That's what living is for you, is creating. In whatever way you do, now you don't have to be a painter or a sculptor or a musician. We are all creators. Let's look at the mystery card though. I'm very interested now if we're gonna get some earth energy. Um, Maybe we'll get an ace, right, of cups to kind of, to add in, to say, hey, we're putting our own little special touches on what this future is. It's not a cookie cutter thing. It's not a, a prefabricated life. Um, I do think you've been getting a lot of prophetic dreams. I think that's why we need the dream filter, because I think you've been getting a lot of this kind of stuff. And it's almost like, okay, I need to just, if I could turn that switch off, and just be objective for a minute, you know, because I think this kind of this subtle divine energy, this, this psychic energy, these kind of dreams and stuff, you know, visions even are happening a lot. And so it, it does feel like we need to turn them off so we can be objective for a time. Yeah. Uh, put your prediction for the mystery card down in the comments. Let's see what we have. Oh, it's a knight of wands. It's certainly not any earth energy. This is fire on fire. Um, again, we're in this, we're in this situation where the horse wants to just rush off, right? And sometimes we can get carried away by the horse. The horse is like running off with the rider. The horse has just gone wild and we're in, we're out of control. We have no say. It's just, we're going with it. We're swept away. 
Uh, that's very impulsive. That's not, that's not really you. So this card is saying, grab the reins of that horse. It wants to run towards this. Just pull it back a little bit, you know, and say, whoa. And, um, and do this analysis. Feel this energy. And, um, you know, do your due diligence. But have control over this horse. Now, I think that when we do that, when we are certain that we are in control too, that we're working together, the horse and the rider should be one, right? You're not using the mind to then tell the, the horse like, okay, we're not going in that direction. Well, the horse really wants to go that way, right? We're just trying to see if there's a way that we can both be on the same page and then we'll ride that way together. So I feel like the horse is going to get its way but the rider wants to feel like it's kind of got an equal say in the matter, you know? And I think that's really important here. And I think that's what, we, that's what we've got with this mystery card, the Knight of Wands. We just, we're gonna feel a lot better about it if we've done our due diligence and we've come to the same conclusion that our, that our body, that our heart has already come to, okay? But I think, yes, this, this is really happening but you've still got to do this work yourself to see it and then go in that direction. It's really, really great. We're going to do an extended reading as well. If you want to stick around, uh, there's a link up and there's a link down. Uh, new readings for Virgo every Tuesday and Saturday, 6 a.m. Chicago time, but I am here every day. You can come back and see me again tomorrow. Let me know how you're doing. Leave a comment for me. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. All right. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is free. It does not cost anything. Um, and that way, you know, I can send you notifications when the next reading comes out. All right. If you haven't checked out my wife's channel, go take a look at her page. It is Ula Tea Leaf Readings. That is U-L-A Tea Leaf Readings. Marvelous work. Truly uh, wonderful work she's doing over there. All right. Virgo, I want you to know that you are the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you, and I love you, and we're all in this together.